So one of the uh, things that I wanted to get finished up, and I just did it off camera, was um, I made up a little uh, handle here, which was, uh, I think it was quarter 28 thread. And that's for the quill lock, so that's, uh, that's working really good now. So, pretty much... I'm pretty happy with this right now. And so the time is uh, to uh, turn our attention to the... Uh, got the pulley housing here. And uh, one of the things right out of the gate that's wrong with it is where the oil cup goes in. Somebody's uh, over tightened this and blew that out. So got to work on a repair or something for this. So that's one of the things. And then the other thing that I did is I picked up uh, one of the motors for it, which is, uh, I think it's half horse. Uh, it's three phase, so I'm going to hook it up to the lathe and... Uh, Again, I, I run my um, lathe off of a VFD, and um, I don't hardwire it. I put a plug on the uh, end of all my motors, and that way I can use the single VFD uh, to run multiple things. So, anyways, we're just going to take that motor and uh, hook it up to the VFD and uh, see what it looks like. So, right now, I've got the... Uh, motor sitting up here and I've got the VFD turned down to uh, uh, just 5 Hertz so we'll see what this does here that sound, sounds and feels pretty good that noise the the major background noise right now is uh, the furnace running in here, but uh, so that's my forward. That's reverse. So again, on my on my lathe or my VFD panel here, I can just flip back and forth between forward and reverse. So I'm going to speed that up a little bit. And that's full speed there, that's 60 hertz, so feels really smooth. There's a little not sure if you can hear it over the furnace, but there's a little bit of noise there. So I think we'll call that ready to uh, ready to uh, get cleaned up, and uh, we'll use it. So for this repair here, I'm going to uh, attempt to use uh, something new to me, anyways, which is uh, aluminum brazing, and. Um, this is again this is for the oil cup for the uh, Bridgeport M head and what I thought I would do is there's a hole 
which feeds the oil down in the bottom. I thought I would uh, make up a slug that fits that smaller diameter down in the bottom and then comes up inside of the threads and uh, which will give me something to build up the aluminum around as well as uh, keep aluminum from going down inside I don't wanna I wanna do as little machining work after as possible just maybe clear it out and then retap it with uh, pretty sure it's pipe um, so anyways yeah I'm gonna spin up a spin up a slug to go down inside of there and uh, maybe even put a uh, quarter quarter twenty or something in the top so I can uh, put a slide hammer on it to pull it out after. So I've got the little pin um, spun up. Uh, this is uh, I think I think it was 3 16ths and 11 32's and then this was just a half inch rough stock and then uh, I did uh, drill and tap a quarter 20 in there just in case. A couple of things I could do I could put a, a bolt in there and turn it and then I could put a uh, uh, dowel puller on it and pull it out as well. So that gives me uh, some room to work and fill this all in. I may actually turn it so it's standing up so I have uh, gravity helping me there. So I've got the housing uh, tipped up so that I can uh, use gravity here. This is the pin that I'm going to use just to uh, stop uh, some of the uh, filler from going into the hole and I'll have to take it out anyway so that's my plan with that these are the uh, rods I picked up so this is my first time using these I'm going to uh, I've got oxygen and acetylene I looked online a few videos uh, um, temperature's got to be up around 700. The application talks about, uh, you know, V-ing it out, making sure you got good surface, clean, uh, breaking up the oxide layer, so i got to do a little bit of work to get this clean. And then you actually heat the base metal and allow the rod to melt with the heat from the base metal so we'll give this a try and see what we get so I've got an oxygen acetylene torch here I'm gonna heat the base metal and then I've got a brand new brush I'm gonna brush it and try and uh, clean it up as best I can here I think that's uh, pretty clean there. I'm going to stick that pin in. And then we'll, uh, I think I might clamp this pin in just so it's not moving around on me. And I think we'll get started.
think overall I'm pretty happy with how that flowed in there. Um, I'm going to let that cool and uh, do some filing and uh, check it to see if it's stuck. So once I once I uh, got the base metal hot enough, the the rod flowed in there quite nicely, and um, um, I think using that pin was uh, definitely a big help because that's held the the metal in position there. So hopefully I can get that pin out, and then uh, like I say, I'll just do some shaping on there, and then uh, repeat the process just to fill it in to get. Um, enough metal in there so I can blend it in and uh, hopefully make it look like it belongs. I'm going to see if I can get that pin out of there right now while it's uh, cooling. Well, that didn't stick. Looks like it might have tried to stick right there. After I pulled that first uh, batch off of there, I uh, I didn't film it, but I did the exact same thing, and I and I just I was a bit more patient, letting the base metal actually melt the rod, and um, so it's stuck. And I've just done a little bit of filing work now in preparation for another batch here just to uh, build it up. So I'm pretty happy with how that repair turned out. I was able to uh, run the pipe tap down through there. And uh, you know, there's a little void over here on this side, but I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna risk heating it up again and losing any strength in this. So uh, I thought it turned out pretty good.